de além de sentido do bem. I agree with those who say land land is something given by God. Something given by God should not be sold, therefore. <laughs> it is with the pleasure, Comrade President, that I am here this afternoon at this important gathering in the history of our country. The Second National Land Conference. I recall in 1991 the Swapo Party government convened a national conference on land and the land of question to address the imbalance in land distribution and ownership. We have listened carefully the report of the Minister of Land on the resolution of the conference I am talking about. The implementation of the recommendation adopted at that conference culminated in the enactment of agricultural commercial land reform act of 1995, act number six of 1995, as a key legislative instrument to expedite land reform. It is therefore my hope that this conference will give an account on the status of the implementation of the 24 consensus resolution adopted by the 1991 land conference. At this point, I, wa I wish to congratulate the Minister for the report that the, he and the, his officials have given us on the resolutions of the Conference of 1991. <laughs> the land should not only be a critical subject to landless Namibians, but to each and every patriotic and peace-loving Namibian. As a citizen of this country, I feel obliged to give my contribution the debate on the land question. I have made my contribution through a document which will be contributed to you, I think, later on. I will, however, highlight some of the issues contained in that document. Importance of land for human existence. Land is a basic need and it is therefore my expectation that this conference
constitutional provision on property rights and the land ownership. In keeping you with the spirit of the policy of national reconciliation, land reform in Namibia has been and is currently anchored on the principle of winning by winning the self. The rationale between this approach was to ensure smooth, orderly, and a peaceful implementation of the land reform process. However, I have observed that since the adoption of the willing buyer, willing seller principle, previously advantaged commercial of farmers have been and they continue to offer land to government at the inflated prices. Our head of state, when he spoke here, he has also mentioned this. In most instances, the land so offered is not suitable for resettlement and the land reform. Again, those who were still there would recall that I served as a minister of land. I served as a minister of land and I am speaking from the experience as a minister. That's a <laughs> the willing buyer, willing seller principle should therefore be abolished. <laughs> the willing seller or the willing buyer, willing seller. In my opinion, it shouldn't be abolished. Yeah. <laughs> It should be a policy to enable government to fast track the land reform program. <laughs> Communal land management. The lady stood here from the Ministry of Land has reported about what is happening in the communal areas. The implementation of the communal land reform at the 202, at the 5 of 2002, is faced with many challenges, which I discussed in detail in my document that I will be distributed. That will be distributed to the participants of this conference. I therefore urge the participants to interrogate these challenges in order to find the solutions for the implementation of the Communal Land Reform Act and related the when she spoke about the women, I was just, my system was just going around. <laughs> I was born there. And I have a chances of traveling these days to see what is happening in some of the communal areas. A lot has to be done. We talk about the land to the women. 
But can they really do something? She has spoken about some men can be putting these women in the fences. <laughs> women need to be given money or resources so that they can hire those who can do the job for them. You give the land to the woman, the woman in some certain areas, they don't even know how to hold to an ex. <laughs>
under chapter 3, that it cannot be amended. If the parliament cannot amend it, let's call it a friend of <laughs> And that is my proposal. <laughs> Absentee landlords in the foreign country. This is another issue of concern to me. That 250 farms, which translate into 2%, in my view, the, 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 the official from the ministry, I think he said 3% or so, of the free whole agricultural commercial land are owned by foreigners and the absentee landlords. I propose that agricultural commercial of farmland owned by foreigners and the absentee landlords be expropriated. Expropriated with a fair compensation. <laughs> I say fair compensation uh, for developmental capital invested in the area. If they have put up houses, and then we take them, we take this land, let's compensate the houses, but not the land. <laughs> Today, when the government wants to buy land, they go and they measure the land and they decide the land from here to here is so much. I will propose what should be done by the land, I mean to the land of this country. A God given something. You see, there is nobody who came with a basket from somewhere getting the land. <laughs> Changing the patterns of land 
by different communities in our country and the overlapping jurisdictions going down the road could have unintended negative consequences and lead to division, tension, I have experience. I have an experience of other countries, I'm not going to mention them, where civil strife, tension, etc., and even bloodshed. And we don't want it to personal, I don't want to see bloodshed in this country any longer. We shed the blood already. That should be enough. Not after independence, and then we have a bloodshed in this country. It is very unfortunate that this topic has been included on the agenda for discussion. However, I call on the participants to approach this topic with an open mind and come up with a resolution that will be in the best interest of this, of our country. I took note of the consensus reached at the first Atlanta conference in 1991 on the ancestral rights. I therefore propose that the ancestral land claims be rejected. <laughs> Finally, as I said, this is just a summary of the document that will be circulated. And the time is something. Now listen carefully. <laughs> Finally, I propose that the entire Namibian land, water, and the natural resources above and below it, the surface of the land, and in the continental shelf, as well as within the territorial waters and the exclusive economic zone of Namibia, be placed under the ownership of the state. The land must belong to the state. The land must not individuals or groups. This is what I feel. Thereafter, thereafter, as the owner of the land, the state shall enter into long and short-term lease, lease agreement. With those currently occupying the land in Namibia, the state shall therefore compensate for development and capital invested on the farm land should the occupier decide to leave. If he leaves, we, have, we buy the houses. But not the left. <laughs> <laughs> then there should be I have also done a little research. I have done a little research in other countries. 
in other countries, there are countries where the land belongs to the state, and <coughs> not to individuals. Individuals can put, put up buildings, higher buildings, but on the state land. He owns the land, but the land is, uh, the, the, the building is on the state land. Um, director of ceremonies, I think I have said the main thing that I wanted to say. And this is my opinion that we should not have the land in this country owned by individuals or groups of people. Land must belong to the state. The state, the state has agencies. The government is an agent of the state. And all structures below the government, after the traditional authorities, they are agents of the state. People do not understand the difference between government and the state. I am talking about the state, I'm not talking about the government. The government is there to do the work of the state. That is the difference. I wish you a fruitful liberation in the spirit of national reconciliation, guided by the motto, one Namibia, one nation. And I'm mindful that the thousands of our people are in their need of land. Make a dignified living, we must not let them down. They need a dignified living. We must not let them down. I think we have let them down for too long, 27 years. Um, this is the document I have circulated to you. Comrade the President, thank you very much. I think maybe I went there too far. <laughs> <laughs> if it comes to the land, the Comrade the President, I'm sorry I don't have an apology. <laughs>